Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, it is truly, truly, truly my hope that y'all can hear me because when I was tired, my voice doesn't project as well as other people. So, uh, no, I'm not tired as in tired, I'm tired as in I'm exhausted. And, you know, I got enough sleep last evening, seven hours, pretty good hours too actually had some pretty good dreams. I love dreams, but it still doesn't stop me from being tired. As I told one gentleman yesterday, seven days a week. It is one of those things I have to keep going. Keep on moving. Don't stop. T okay, anyway, and as long as I keep moving, <laughs> I'm unstoppable. <laughs> Hold on one second. I had to do a quick adjustment to the screen. Uh, what's happening is I've noticed on some of the videos the screen has been cut off at the bottom. And so we don't need nobody to be cut off. Um, I I'll take care of cutting people off later. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to go ahead and explain to you all about the SEC lawsuit. Um, when I did the filing on behalf of millions of people, what I had noticed was a lot of complaints. Uh, many people have been trading cryptocurrency throughout the world. And these cryptocurrency trading platforms, uh, they're known as blockchains. And the way blockchains are set up, we're not going to go into all the details of how a blockchain is set up, smart contracts, and so on and so forth. I didn't know much about this until the beginning of this year, when I started actually looking into it. As I told you before, they came up with a Bitcoin, I had come up with what was known as grant funds. These are electronic. They're, they are not physical in any effort whatsoever, any attempt to make them physical. Grant funds is what we pay our staff in. We have been doing this, I've been doing this since 1999. I came up with the idea in 1998. I was on vacation and I was just sitting up there thinking. I said, thinking is what I do. And so I was thinking. And while I was thinking, I came up with the idea. I'm opening up some documents in the background because I am needing to do some amendments. We're getting ready to file a class action lawsuit um, for our current mortgage clients and debt clients, as well as the defrauded homeowners of America clients. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to take up a lot of my time. I'm going to tell you, even though I've mentioned it before, I'm going to mention it again. There's a several alphabet soup organizations, and what they do is they sue corporations. Now, they are allowed to sue corporations, but you're not. And they sue corporations not because they want to win. Pay attention. Not because they want to win. They sue corporations because they want settlements. And you, if you're a corporation, you hire these stupid attorneys to go in and the attorneys work out a settlement and the attorneys get paid and the system keeps going. Then a couple of years later, it's a tax, people. They're taxing, it's pay to play. If you challenge them, they will ruin you. They will garnish your wages, they will sit up there and freeze your bank accounts. They will paperwork you to death, make you comply with every single nook and cranny of every single regulation because that's what they do. This happens every year, and this is how they keep their system going. It is just the way the system operates. I gotta put you guys on pause. I see something that is unusual. One second. As soon as I get my mouse to work right, one second. Sorry about that, folks. I was looking through my camera and I saw these two creatures that look like puppies because of the distance. They're about um, 60 feet away. And they look like little puppies. And the way they were walking, I'm going, huh, that doesn't make any sense. We don't have puppies like that around here. And they were black, so I couldn't figure it out. And then I went and looked out the window and I saw they were crows. Sorry, if you guys have not noticed the size of these crows, when I was a kid, crows, they were twice the size less than they are now. They're twice as big these days. That's because they're eating them steroids that them people putting in them foods that they're giving to these birds. Well, that's, that's probably true as well. 
All right. Uh, no. The answer is cancel. Sorry, it's doing some things in the background, so y'all have to excuse me. Well, back to the SEC and these alphabet soup companies. The other day, AT&T, like Wells Fargo in the past, was caught setting up accounts for people in their name without their knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, who gave them permission to do that, to touch your property without your permission? Well, so the FTC decided to give them a fine after, you know, bringing a lawsuit against them. And they settled, and they did a fine. And the people are going to get their money back, okay? And that's it. They get a fine, and they get to keep doing business. Nobody goes to jail for the fraud. That's intentional fraud, ladies and gentlemen. That's an attempt to defraud the people. Why? Because they did it for financial gain. Hey, that's what I was trying to do, y'all. Let's see. We're going to minimize this. I said minimize. It don't want to minimize, y'all. It wants to play with me. This is a template that uh, the suit's already written. I just figure instead of going with the one that's already written, I'll start from scratch. You know, DJ Scratch, and I'll start from scratch. Wait, come on now. Stop playing with me. See, it, see how it's playing? And it's playing again. Come on now. See, it just playing, y'all. It ain't letting me do nothing. Let's do that one more time. It's because I have this uh, software on here that I just want to minimize it. I don't want to close it. All right, tell you what we do. It ain't letting me do nothing. It's just sitting up here just looking at me because it's stupid, y'all. No, it's because I got so much going on. You know, I always got a lot going on. I'm going to click here to see if it'll do it. It ain't doing it, y'all. Oh, well. Give me a second. Be right back. I'll try to keep this simple. I had to do some adjustments of some things in the background. Ladies and gentlemen, because it's an ongoing thing for these organizations and companies that are government institutions to sue companies and keep the monies, keep the proceeds that they get as a result of the lawsuit. What you all are not able to understand because this is something that they don't advertise. These companies, when they bring forth the lawsuit, they keep they keep the monies that they settle for in-house. These fines, that doesn't go back to the taxpayers. <laughs> they keep that in-house. They claim they use it to do further investigations and to help blah, 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 blah. That's what taxes are for. That's why people pay taxes to keep these organizations going. The only organization that survives off of its own funds is the United States Postal Service. They don't receive any government funds, but all the other organizations receive government funds. It's called government funding. So if they're governmentally funded organizations, did you say governmentally? Yes, I did, leave me alone. If they are funded organizations and they receive their monies by taxpayers, then why do they get to keep the proceeds of the lawsuits and the fines that they impose upon companies? How come that doesn't go back to the taxpayers? How come that doesn't go to reduce their budget for the next year? But their budgets continue to increase year after year after year after year because nobody's paying attention. The hens are out of the chicken coop. The fox are in the chicken coop and they're all living together and drinking and smoking and all that other stuff because one's Republican and the other one's Democrat and the other one's independent. But nobody pays attention that this is the way things have been going on. So, I did something that nobody has done to the present day. Because these organizations represent their own interests and don't represent the interests of the people, I, on behalf of all of the other likely situated individuals, such as myself, known as the customers, went and read a lawsuit that we were involved in. And the court referred to us, shareholders, investors, clients, customers, as one name the customers throughout this order and they mentioned it 54 times the customers 
So we were the subject of that particular document because it was only eight pages, mentioning us eight on eight pages 54 times. So I thank the court for documenting that we were a class. And I said, well, everybody else is represented here. How come the class isn't represented? So I nominated myself to represent the class temporarily until they can appoint an attorney to represent the class. Why would I do that? Knowing that this is an international case, everybody's going to be focused on me. Next thing you know, they're going to attack me. Why would I put myself in a situation like that? Am I bored? Do I not have something better to do? No, because I saw the people who were suffering as a result of not having access to their crypto throughout the world because of what the SEC did. The SEC was trying to cause a lot of disarray in the crypto communities. And they have. They've affected it. Their billions of dollars have been lost as a result of the SEC lawsuit. Well, the SEC had to be uh, hit in the back with a whip and saying, hold on there, Sonny, what you doing? Y'all moving too fast. Uh-uh. Y'all ain't doing this no more. We're not going to play this game no more because it is a game. And so I did a motion to intervene, basically joining the lawsuit, and I did a counterclaim. The motion to intervene, the court had already identified us as customers, so they already named us as a class. So we have the right to intervene because we are directly affected by the proceedings and the outcome of the proceedings. And the court mentions that we are affected we're affected by the proceedings and as a result i came into the case but i did something that no one has done before people have done motions to intervene all the time as a matter of fact 74 lawyers had tried to do a motion to intervene and the court kicked them on out but nobody had done a motion to intervene in a counterclaim see the court can't get rid of the counterclaim court can't say we don't have a right because our interest is not involved both our property interest and our uh, intellectual interests are involved here so the court is having to make a decision I have thrown a monkey wrench into the entire case by doing this and I know that the only problem is I wasn't trying to do just a monkey wrench I was trying to set a precedent for the rest of the time these alphabet suit agencies think that they can continue to do this without taking the people into consideration see from now on attorneys will do the same thing that I'm doing they will come in as a class representing the class and some of them will fail but many of them will succeed and that will slow this yearly circus down you see the advertisements all the time such and such is suing such and such and now the government says this and the government says that what sec did is that they went after binance to ruin binance reputation to force them to settle binance is a multi-billion dollar company and so they were trying to get hundreds of millions of dollars from Binance. What? Ladies and gentlemen, if only you knew the game. This is the game, and it ain't about rapping. All right, hey, I gotta go. I just wanted to let you guys know what was going on in the background. I'm getting ready to do the same thing with the Defrauded Homeowners of America. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why we accepted those accounts from those individuals. That's why we did the limited power of attorney we did the limited power of attorney so that I had an interest in each of the matters so that when it's time to go to court, I have a legitimate gripe. We're getting ready to do arbitrations on the Eon Foundation's behalf because that's whom the limited power of attorney is with. And the arbitration is not going to be on the client's behalf. Pay attention. The clients will be able to do an arbitration later, but not through the Eon Foundation. We're not going to clutter it that way because things have to get done. So that's getting ready to be done soon. And the only thing is their default. We have every single one of these companies ignored the limited power of attorney. Well, they can't ignore a limited power of attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, a power of attorney is a power of attorney. Nobody can ignore a power of attorney. I had one company say, well, we changed our policies. The only way you could do a power of attorney is if you're an actual attorney. And I told the woman, I said, you must be out of your mind. I said, you guys don't get to control how somebody exercises their right to an attorney. Their right under their power of attorney. I said, you must be crazy, you and your organization.
there's no possible way that I am going to allow that, nor am I, is my client going to allow you to dictate how he's going to communicate with you. That's not how this works. You are just a servicer. Well, well, the blah, 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 blah said. Well, then you need to have blah, 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 blah communicate to us because you don't get to communicate on their behalf regarding such a thing. You are just a subcontractor. You don't get to speak on behalf of them regarding such matters. That is a separate contract. You are not even involved in that contract. So uh, let's just say they understood. Okay, well, for, uh, in this case, uh, we're going to make an exception. Oh, no, you're not making an exception. You tried to make an exception, and we told you no. Of course, they have to polish it up. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I got to go because I got a consult in three minutes, so I got to go take care of that. I'll speak to y'all later. Y'all has a Coke and a smile. Got to go, got to go, got to go. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to be splicing two videos together. So when you hear this part, the very next video afterwards or before, I think I'm going to do this one after the first one. <laughs> okay. Um, the video before this was done prior, but this is about what's going on with cryptocurrency right now. As I stated in that video, and I'm going to reiterate here before I go eat lunch, ladies and gentlemen, what they have done is the governments around the world have decided to do a hostile takeover of cryptocurrency. They've gone after every cryptocurrency platform claiming that they are not complying with some stupid regulation. However, cryptocurrency was never to be in compliance with regulation, ever. Why? Because somebody created it. The, the concept was created in the 80s. The idea uh, developed through the 90s. And then in the 2000s, they actually deployed it. The government didn't do it. This was something new. Government was getting ready to do this, but somebody beat them to the punch. They came up with stable coins. They came up with, uh, what do you call it, blockchain, protection, securities. All of that was developed privately, not by the government. So now the government wants to regulate it because, well, because of the definition of the Supreme Court, blah, blah, blah. Well, here's the thing. Cryptocurrency was always peer-to-peer. -peer. The fact that the trading of peer-to-peer -peer currencies have taken on platforms where individuals can go to a platform and do it as opposed to the dark web or in private email addresses because too many people were being scammed and taken advantage of. Well, that's why they need regulations because they were being scammed and taken advantage of. That's fine. I'm not against regulations. I'm actually supporting regulations. But I am not supporting the way they want to regulate it. They want to regulate it through the SEC. No, the SEC ain't got no business regulating cryptocurrency because it doesn't fit a security. What needs to be is Congress needs to step in and Congress needs to set the regulations. Why? Because many of them are invested in cryptocurrency. So you better believe it's going to be somewhat better than if you let the SEC do it. And they're voting on it now. This is the week of the 20th of July, ladies and gentlemen. However, because the court in Washington, D.C., labeled a group, investors, stockholders, shareholders, as the customers. Ladies and gentlemen, we're private investors. We're fitting into that group. So I came in representing the whole clan because nobody else had done it. As a matter of fact, whenever the lawsuit has been brought by a United States entity, such as the SEC, the FTC, the FCC, the IRS, or any other government entity, whenever they brought a lawsuit that involved customers or American public, or consumers, none of the consumers have ever stepped up and said, hey, we are here, we are here, we are here. You guys are, wait, those organizations can't represent us. The money goes to them if they win. We don't get anything from, we don't benefit from their win. So because the SEC gets money in the form of fines, the people don't get any money. The people who own cryptocurrency was not going to get anything from the lawsuit of the SEC because it's not even embedded within their suit. It's not even taken into as a criteria. The stupid, now let me be quiet, the individual who leads the SEC, the so-called chairman, he's now seeking to have more money given to the SEC so that they can fight against these entities. Excuse me, more money? What about the settlements and the lawsuits that you guys be getting? 
so I came in and I did a motion to intervene, and I did it on behalf of the class. The problem is none of the other attorneys out there thought about it. This is a multinational suit, and nobody else thought about it but little bitty old me. And all this time that they have been doing these suits, nobody else has ever come in representing the people on top of what the SEC was doing. The SEC is not representing our interests. They can't. They're representing the interests of the SEC. That's why we don't get anything from it. They can claim they're representing our interests, but the court clearly documented that they are not representing our interests. Why? Because the SEC is accusing us of money laundering. That's right. They're accusing us of money laundering. So if you're going to accuse us of money laundering, which is what they're doing, then that means you're not representing our interests. And the company that they're suing can't represent our interests because they're out to protect themselves. So somebody had to represent our interests. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Court, for identifying us as being a class. Yeah, the court mentioned the customers more than 52 times in one motion, eight-page motion, 52 times. So the court identified the class to be known henceforth as blah, 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 the customers. Okay, so the court identified us as a class. So how come to this day nobody has ever come and represent the class? Well, I did. Very first time it's been done in history. Go ahead and check. And here's the other precedent-setting thing that was done. Brought a suit against the SEC and the company that the SEC is suing, Binance. So Binance decided to retaliate through its subsidiary by not giving us a signal to trade on today. It's okay. No, no, it's okay. Because now I'm putting my heels in the sand. The only problem is this sand is not quicksand. This sand is turning into stone. You see, I asked them nicely, gave them a way out, and they decide they want to retaliate. So how do you handle that type of ignorance? They're going to make this about me. I guarantee you before it even happens, I've already told our people this for the last two and a half weeks, that that's what they're going to do. You make it about me. You come after me. You make me look stupid. You try to make me look stupid, and I promise you, I will show you what 30 years of experience will bring you. Remember, I'm the underdog here, but I've already won because the courts have already ruled in our favor last week against Ripple when they decided to rule in favor of the XRP coin in the lawsuit that the SEC brought against Ripple. We are private investors. So that means that we should never have been a part of this suit. Can't accuse us of money laundering. You people have already violated our rights by turning over our records without our input. Go ahead, keep messing with me. So, ladies and gentlemen, in a nutshell, I am tired of individuals trying to be a bully against me. You want to badmouth me? Go right ahead. You want to make me look stupid? Go right ahead. I promise you, if you don't understand what tenacity is, then you really need to do your research. Now, other than that, ladies and gentlemen, they can just allow people the right to withdraw their funds. Either way, I'm asking for an attorney to be appointed anyway in the case. You see, I've already done my work. I've already set precedent after precedent after precedent. The thing, so in the United States, and doing so as a class, in a class action, in a counterclaim, in a motion to intervene, and then suing the company that was being sued in the first place and coming in as both man, a petitioner, and a so-called co-defendant, and it took less than 28 pages of work, and the judge is put in a position where she can try to kick us out, but she can't. Why? Because she identified our interests. So all we have to do is identify the fact that we have a stake in the outcome of the matter. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, SEC. Thank you, Binance. Again, you want to play with me, I'll show you what I can do legally. Ain't no threat. This is me telling you that I haven't even thrown everything I could at the wall. But I already know what's going to stick, okay? And I'm going to put a point at the end so that when it does stick, it penetrates to make sure it goes through the wall, and hopefully it comes out on the other end so that you guys will understand that I'm not throwing rocks at nobody's wall. My job is to aim my missile at the wall and to throw as many missiles against the wall as I possibly can with titanium tips. So 
sorry, had to clean that up because too many minds out there go in too many different directions with too many too much ignorance. We have a bunch of these idiots who go to so called law school to learn procedures and policies that will come in and give their two cents, which is worthless and valueless. Give me a second, please. All right, I'm not going to keep going on for too much longer. This is just to document the record in advance of knowing what these idiots are going to do. Even though I've already put it on our videos with our teams and our groups, I know that they're going to do it, and so I want to put it out there for all of you so when they do it, they'll have no excuse for me explaining myself to them. Now, we're getting ready to do the class action lawsuit for the defrauded homeowners of America. I told you guys I ain't forgot about you. Plus, all of you individuals who are part of our debt programs, we're getting ready to do the class action lawsuit. This one is going to be a class action lawsuit because we have the people who are already signing up and signing in. All right, we're going to get a document for you that you're going to get notarized, speaking of your being a part of the class, okay, and that you're doing a suit. We'll have the document for you to get notarized that we're going to fall into this case, and because we all have something in common, Bobby and Whitney, Eon and Eon Foundation, Bobby and Whitney, we got something in common. We're going to be going into this suit. Again, first time this has ever been done, especially this way. Pay attention. All right? I don't spend all this time doing all this talking because I don't know what I'm doing. There are a lot of people out there who want to second guess me. But if you really think you know more than I do, this is talking to all those people who think they do, then how come you haven't done any of this before me? Go ahead, then shut up. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why most people don't do this is because they can't afford the heat that comes with it. They can't afford the consequences that come with it. I understand the consequences, know it in advance. Knew the job was dangerous before I took it, but they still got to deal with me. It's okay. We're in a corrupt system with a bunch of corrupt individuals in corrupt power. But eventually that corruptness has to meet up with reality. And reality don't play when you let it do what it's supposed to do. All right, James, uh, not James Brown, Ray Charles. I'm going to make it do what it do. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to make it do what it do. They want to play, I promise you, it's time that we're going to play. See, the only problem is I'm not by myself. See, the only problem is I have people who will fall in line, follow suit, the people who will come together right now over me. Okay, so let's see. Now, the only thing we're asking for is for Binance to open up partial withdrawals, no less than 40%. If they do less than 40%, then I promise you, hill in the ground. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to be more stubborn, and I'm going to be asking for a whole lot more. We're about to start doing discovery. They don't want to play with me because my discovery is not going to be the same as the discovery of the SEC. SEC, we're going to do discovery on you. We need to find out where those funds went for all those other lawsuits that you filed. If the people aren't getting any of that, that means you weren't representing the interests of the people. That means you are a fraud saying that they're enforcing some regulation. Well, if you're enforcing a regulation, then how come it isn't going back to the taxpayers? How come it isn't going to help reduce the national deficit? Of course it isn't going to that. You guys don't realize that most of these agencies get to pocket the money that they win in these large settlements. The attorneys get to pocket the money. Go ahead. We'll pull the finances. They want to pull the finance of Binance. We'll pull their finances. See, the only problem with Binance, what they didn't do, is Binance didn't countersue. Shame, shame, shame. Ladies and gentlemen, you never let somebody bring a lawsuit against you without countersuing. Okay, we're going after the SEC because the SEC has overstepped this bound. It's acted in clear absence of all jurisdiction. There is no jurisdiction for the SEC to sit up there and regulate cryptocurrency. The SEC is a regulatory agency, but because Congress hasn't specified that cryptocurrencies are a security, they have no jurisdiction. They're trying to read into something. Somebody needs to give them some Ebonics lessons. All right, thank you all for joining us. We're going to splice the two videos together, and you'll have it soon. Have a good day, everybody. Arrivederci, adios, sayonara. Goodbye.